So this is <coughs> Doodle Doo. Um, bought in Las Vegas from Anthropology. Now I started this, first thing I did was print some pictures of my own work off just for a little bit of inspiration because I'm I'm kind of, this book started as a way to move my own work forward, not to use other people's work for inspiration, but I just put in a little picture here of something done by somebody called Maxine Bristow because I love the mark making on here with Stitch and I love all of her work and having this in here will make me remember the other pieces that she's done that are different to this, that you know, that I really love and that inspired me years ago when I was studying. So I just started off with stitching on paper, that's what that is. Um, and then again, this is more Maxine Bristow over here, just a little cut out picture, it's not stuck in or anything, I've just got it in with a paper clip. And then here, looking at the uniform marks really on Maxine Bristol but I was inspired by that a long time ago like I said so I think I work quite a lot in uniform marks already that's probably driven partly by what she did so I've just got some cross stitch and French knots and web stitches over here sorry mounted in little frames okay little um, mounts this page is very fine cloth just playing with it <coughs> excuse me withdrawing threads on that piece and um, withdrawing there and wrapping and then doing the same thing in a different way over here to change that okay to make that look different so they're all using the same initial process but then been moved forward in different ways and that's just a little sketch that I did a little doodle and that's not stuck in either that's just you know paper clips again and then here I kind of thought I was going to look at words so I just printed some definitions off the internet and um, repetitive characterized by or given to unnecessary repetition boring dull okay and I would argue with that I don't think it's boring and dull and um, so I've got here boring is ceaseless constant continual insistent monotonous repeated so you know you can make those words if you like those words I love repetitive I love repetitive work and I don't consider it boring so this was me trying to move those definitions on to fit with how I felt okay and um, constant that's a good one because I like to think my work's constant and continual and insistent you know and repeated they're not negative words I don't think so that's what that was about and then over here this is another artist called Mary Kelly um, whose work I absolutely love okay and um, these pieces are documenting her son as an infant you know you'd have to read up about her she's very involved but I do like her work and how she represents her feelings and then some silk work mounted within the page window mounts cut out of the page and mounted in there and there's quite a bit in here I hadn't realized until I came to use it the other day and this is what the back looks like by the way that's the back of the page where the silk is mounted okay um, and here some works on paper that I've mounted so these are actually stuck in you know they're not actually the page hasn't been altered that they've just been stuck on the page so there's two pieces of works on paper there that would lend themselves to being made into hangings perhaps that kind of form of artwork uh, I want to crack on really because I don't want this to last forever and the same again here, two more pieces, works on paper, that are just stuck in. So yeah, it works on paper, and um, again, just mounted. Um, then here, again, I mean, I keep thinking it's getting boring now, because these are just mounted as well, but it's what you're mounting. This is paper, but it's stitched into, it's pricked, and it's actually got here, threads, crossing over that space that I cut in the paper. So the paper's been cut and fabric's been put behind it. And there's threads going across it. And here, a piece of embroidered silk has been almost applied to the paper like it would be applied to cloth using cut work. So these will all inform in the future. You know, I could come back and look through this in two years, three years, and still, you know, get ideas from this and move these on. Looking at it now, I'm thinking of ways I could move those on. So that's why it's useful to record your process in this way. Again, I was looking at openings here, um, cutting out the paper again, putting fabric behind and putting threads across, stitching uniformly, repetitively, there you go, repetitive, and a strip of buttonholes, handbound buttonholes. 
So, you know, that will inform in the future. And I got pleasure from doing these. I might not necessarily have done them. I can't remember exactly for each one. Some of them I remember why I did them, but some of them I can't quite recall. But even if I just thought, oh, I really want to make a buttonhole, I'd just make one and put it in here, okay? You know, that's a, a good thing, a positive thing. And if you make something like that and you think, what am I going to do with it now? Then here's your answer. It can go in a book and you can always have it to look at it and take care of it. And this one, I did just strip a bullion knot and I cut the page so that the bullion knots would come through the page as if they were coming through these trees, okay? And I love this book. I hadn't realised how much work I've done in here, but I have done a lot of work in here. And then I've got like a fastening situation going on here. I've got a stitched piece of silk with another stitched piece of silk that's got hooks on that implies it's going to fasten, hook and eyes. The eyes aren't there. I didn't want to put them in. Um, I'm not a person who likes to stick things in the middle. I'm not a person who likes to be overly predictable. I kind of sometimes like to miss things out on purpose. So we've got no eyes, but you've got the sense of the hooks there that imply fastening could be going on. But you know, the hooks aren't there. The, sorry, the eyes aren't there. So that's that page. And then this is another piece. The eyes are there, but it doesn't meet to fasten, okay? And behind there is some metallic silk tissue that I've embroidered onto, and that's extended into there where I've cut those windows out and this top one is very densely embroidered less embroidery here down to no embroidery here so i've got so much in here i'm so happy that i've done this and that i've got them I and i've got loads of sketchbooks don't get me wrong but this is the most recent that's had a lot of attention um this one machine embroidery with hand stitch on again mounted in a window with complementary work done on the paper that it's mounted on okay and the same over here hand stitch that's complementing this piece. So if I was to say, I mean, I don't know this could be mounted in a frame. It's probably a valid piece of work that could be mounted in a frame and perhaps sold or whatever. Um, or it could equally, it could be made bigger, more large scale, made purely in fabric and not cloth. It informs, it, it helps, it guides, you know, it's a reference here and there's inspiration in here in many forms, okay. And then the ones that you saw that I've just done most recently, this one, the pin tuck with the applique on top and a little bit of cut work. But I actually, when I did it, I didn't like it. I was sitting, stitching it one evening and I really didn't like it. But now it's in here, it's got more validity. It's got more importance now it's in here because it's mounted. Okay, and it's a reference and I might not have liked it, but I do like how the circle alters the lines and things. So it still informs, it's still valid and worth something. And now it's in here, I'm pleased that I didn't just put it in the bin because I've done that in the past as well. So, you know, I preserved it, I damp stretched it and I mounted it in here. And then that one, the smaller one, just with the very simple lines of embroidery. So that's it so far. And I'm not saying, I mean, there's loads of pages in here. Look at all these, loads of them. And it's a wonderful book. And the person who did this, doesn't know how inspired they've made me and probably a lot more people in the world um, so I'm just so glad I found this book and if I found another one I would probably get it as well um, so you know I'm not saying these will all ever be completely filled these pages but what a wonderful resource to have to mount your work in and to preserve your embroidery samples I feel quite blessed to have this resource